Hi, it's Ileana, and I'm very surprised by who I just remote viewed. I remote, remote viewed JP, the military source. And JP has a lot of depth and interesting stuff to him. I can't reveal what's in the remote viewing because when you're doing remote viewing, if you're, if you're looking at a person, you're not supposed to reveal anything about them, just like military records. Anything that is private, that you're looking at the person during remote viewing, or just psychically, it's private stuff that you learn about them and you can't put it out there. Just like in missing persons cases, if, if you're doing finding somebody who's either alive or passed on, has died through natural circumstances or been murdered, you're not supposed to reveal the particulars of remote viewing findings to the public. You give it to the police. If they're welcome to it, if they want the information, you hand it over to the police because that's evidence. Anything in remote viewing can be considered evidence. If it's verifiable, if it's provable, it's evidence and the police will want it. Privately, of course, they'll never tell publicly that they used a remote viewer or a psychic on a case. They don't do that. So they won't. But it's interesting. I didn't have any preconceptions about JP, not at all. This, this person is very interesting. I could say that much. They have interesting abilities and they have an interesting lifestyle, actually. That much I can reveal because I'm not disclosing anything about him and the way he leads his life or lives his life. Again, one of the things I teach in remote viewing is if you are looking at people and remote viewing people, you need to keep, keep that private and respect their privacy because they're a living human being who you're having a look at. I don't think it's against the rules to remote view people as long as you do it re respectfully and honestly and kindly and don't reveal anything about them. Now I better understand that what I was asking for might, might have been a little bit, you know, out there in regards to asking for some verification of proof of who JP is in a blanked out ID or anything to do with the US Army. It still would be nice to have that verification, but I don't ever think he'd make it public because that's his private ID, honestly. So whoever he works with in the US military, he would not give us the ID. The guy is very interesting and there's character and depth to this person. It's not just a simplistic soul that JP is. Now I have a bit more respect for the being that I've remote viewed. As before, I had preconceptions. Now I don't, don't necessarily have those preconceptions because what I saw is actually quite different from what I was thinking. And that surprised me. Again, I don't know what, what I will see in a remote viewing of a person, a situation, a thing, a relic, an artifact, an item, something off world, something on planet. It could be anything and everything because there's no limitation in what I can remote view and what I do. I won't be making anything public regarding JP because that's private. It's a private remote viewing of a living being. No names, nothing that will be shown or said. Even when I was in connection with Time Corporations and Planetary Corporations, Time Corp taught me 
when you're doing remote viewing, you never reveal anything about people because that's in violation of the soul, the sanctity and the privacy of the soul. So during remote viewing that I do now, the same rules apply. You don't talk about a person. You don't make anything public about a person. If you draw anything, write anything out in a remote viewing about people, keep that in your file records. It's good to once in a, once in a while remote view people. It's good practice, not just things or situations or something off planet or items. People can be remote viewed and some people have very strong shielding and they can protect themselves against being remote viewed. I was able to remote view JP. He has very good shields. And I think there was some awareness on his part that he knew that someone was having a look at him. And that's fine. He has the right to try to see who I am as well and what I was looking at in his soul because I was in his soul energy. I interacted with his soul energy during the remote viewing. I connect to the souls of people. When I do psychic work or remote viewing work, if I'm remote viewing a person, I am connected to their soul and I can be deeply connected to see who they are or what they do and what their purpose is on earth or off planet or elsewhere. And JP has a purpose. He has a strong purpose to who he is and what he does. And he has goals, he has ideas, he has wishes and desires, strongly believing what he believes in. And he is one interesting human being. So it was interesting to remote view him. There's depth, there's character, there's strength, and there's depth to this humanoid being and much more. When someone is remote viewing people, they sometimes can get to know the personality of the person. They're looking at where the person was born, who they are, who their family is, what they do for work, where they live even. It is amazing what you can find through remote viewing. It's like you're building an archive on who the person is or a profile of the living being that you're looking at. Because again, you're connected to their soul vibration, literally to their soul. It's a living being that you're working up a profile of. In a sense, that's what you're doing when remote viewing a living being. Whether human being or something else that's alive, that has sentience, that has a personality that is in 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D and higher, that being is doing something. It's leading a life. It's having a life. It's having a lifetime. And you're part of it while you're remote viewing that being. It could be a very intimate experience from what I just saw remote viewing JP. I've seen aspects of this living soul's life that I am going to respect and I am going to just say thank you for what I saw and it was a privilege to have been able to look at this living being and what their life is like and what they've gone through in life as well. I've seen some of the past things in his life that are part of who he is today and who he will be in the future as well. Th that was part of it too, something of a future that's in his future going forward. Sometimes you'll see a past, sometimes you'll see the present or the future in remote viewing when dealing with people. It's not always linear time that you're seeing when remote viewing, which I experienced today. So thank you so much and namaste.